Well, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Peace be upon you and a very good evening. I bid to Professor Uli Weinberg, President of Global Design Thinking Alliance or GDTA and Director of HPID School for STEM, Germany. Uh, my friend, Datuk Lee Yu Meng, Secretary General of Global Design Thinking Alliance and CEO of the school Malaysia, members of the Global Design Thinking Alliance and everyone present here at the GDTA's virtual conference. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the Global Design Thinking Alliance the Hasso Platner Institute and Genovasi Malaysia for giving me this opportunity today to share my thoughts and insights of, um, at the GDTA virtual conference today. I would also like to applaud the organizers and working committee team for an excellent job in hosting this event. It is indeed a great honor to be here with all of you virtually. Friends, it is very heartwarming and encouraging to see all the important players gathered together virtually to align ourselves in the same direction and share creative ideas on responsible innovation in times of uncertainty. I commend the selected theme as we believe innovation would increase our capability to react to changes and to face as well as overcome any challenges. Allow me to share with everyone on what Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, and what he said about innovation. He said, I quote, innovation has been the main factor in the success of Apple in the IT industry, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, no doubt that COVID-19 has accelerated the drive for innovation in Malaysia. The government must then be innovative in implementing activities to combat, to combat COVID-19. Malaysia, under the leadership of our, of our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Tan Sri Mohyeddin Yassin, has outlined six phase 6R approach, that is resolve, resilience, restart, revitalize and reform to break the transmission chain of the virus and to revitalize the economy. To date, several approaches have been implemented which saw the country's capability in containing the virus as well as restoring the nation's economic resilience. Four economic stimulus packages have been introduced of which the latest are the National Economic Regeneration Plan or Penjana to protect the socio-economic of the people, propel businesses and stimulate the economy. It has 40 initiatives worth 35 billion ringgit, of which 1 billion is specially allocated for the development of the tourism industry as to ensure that the country's tourism industry can remain competitive. Leading through a crisis is no doubt a challenge, like what Camilla just mentioned. No, we never expected what, what was going to happen. Well, we have to go through it, especially when handling something as severe as the COVID-19 global pandemic. Sharing my experience when I first entered the office to the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture on March 10, nobody knew that the whole world would be in a lockdown. That was two days after, that was a few days after my, my swearing in ceremony. Then um, it was a lockdown. So back then only Wuhan and most of the surrounding Hubei province had imposed a pandemic lockdown. The news was met with astonishment all over the world. I was worried because as an industry that involves the movement of people and enables people to people connectivity, tourism is primarily the first to take a beating and the last to, to recover. The implementation of Movement Control Order or MCO came a week after that in an effort to stem the increasing number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia. The order included a ban on public gatherings, religious, sports, social and cultural activities. All Malaysians 
are barred, barred from traveling abroad, and foreign tourists and visitors are banned from entering. All the steps by the government are important for the safety of the people, even though it means no tourism activities in the country. No tourism activities means no money. Well, schools, universities, government and private premises have been ordered to close, except for those in essential services. All places of worship and businesses were ordered to be closed, except food eateries and shops selling food supplies. The entire country was under quarantine. As a tourism minister, I have been more concerned about how our industry players deal with the, the impacts since all tourism activities have come to a halt. It was a huge challenge for me and the ministry to bear this responsibility. Nevertheless, we have made some remarkable progress with the teamwork and cooperation of the various stakeholders through continuous engagement virtually during MCO and CMCO. Ladies and gentlemen, Albert Einstein said that, I quote, in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity, end quote. MCO forces the industry to think outside the box, to find innovative problem solving, approaches in order to be relevant in today's new normal. For example, many businesses have improved their digital presence and offer online services in order to remain relevant. Through webinars, e-travel fairs, and other e-commerce applications, operators and product owners after their services and accept online, offer their services and accept online reservations more efficiently to provide a more convenient service to consumers. This would be cost effective in the long run, allowing savings in terms of logistics and manpower. As Malaysia continued to show improvement in the COVID-19 situation, the government then decided to allow domestic tourism starting from 10th June. This move has enabled our tourism industry to move forward. Since then, the domestic tourism begins to improve. I am relieved to receive recent data that hoteliers are reporting improved occupancy rates over the past weeks in Malaysia's historic cities of Malacca and Georgetown, as well as popular resorts and beach destinations in Malaysia's East Coast states of Pahang and Trengganu. This shows that the public is responding to the efforts made by the operators and industry players. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to enable the country's economy to recover as quickly as possible, an effective tourism and cultural recovery plan is essential. This is how we apply the responsible innovation in times of uncertainty. As we all know, the Visit Malaysia Year 2020 campaign has been canceled. However, efforts to promote the country as a safe tourist destination must continue. If this is not done, greater losses will be experienced by the country's tourism and cultural industries, thus delaying the recovery of the industry and the whole economy when the outbreak recedes. For us at MOTEC, we have built our own strategies and have planned on how we would want to recover. Although the World Tourism Organization has mentioned that it would take four years to fully recover, we do not want to wait that long. We have our own target, which is by the second quarter of next year. The panjana that I mentioned earlier, which was mentioned uh, which was provided, which has provided robust economic activity incentives for the tourism sectors. Under this plan, budget hotels, registered homestays under MOTEC, chalets, 
resorts, travel agencies, and tour operators, MICE ecosystem, transportation providers for tourists, tourism-related retails, recreation, and wellness will benefit from the 1 billion ringgit allocation to enable them to remain viable and competitive in the new normal. Through the tourism recovery plan and also culture recovery plan as well, we have taken several reform measures, which includes reinventing, strengthening, remodeling, and embracing, fostering, and enhancing. Responsible innovation in times of uncertainty also means that creative domestic tourism activities should be carried out with strict application of standard operating procedures or the SOPs that have been very popular these days. And we at MOTEC were well prepared prior to the reopening of domestic tourism in order to boost the confidence of travelers with various health and safety protocols in place. This include implementing physical distancing, sanitization and disinfection of hotels, guest rooms, vehicles, and training tour guides to ensure compliance with the SOPs and safeguard tourists from possible infection. And as of date, 13 SOPs have been approved by the National Security Council that includes art, culture, and heritage exhibition, hotel accommodation premises, tour operating companies, licensed travel and tour guiding, homestay, scuba diving, adventurous activities, dry and water theme parks, and mice events. Ladies and gentlemen, while the domestic tourism may not fill the gap to fully support the industry, it may reduce the impact on the economy as a whole. Together with responsible innovation alongside aggressive promotional measures, I believe domestic tourism will keep the tourism related businesses running and help to stimulate the local economy until international tourism fully resumes again, inshallah, God willing. Before I conclude, once again, I would like to express my thanks to the organizing committee for their efforts in arranging today's session. Actually, I really miss to be to be at the Genovese, Genovese itself. We have been there for a few years. So I really miss to be with uh, everyone there. Anyway, I look forward to your ideas and recommendations to shed the light to a complex web of responding to crisis while respecting the responsible and res responsibility aspect of the, the response. In addition, successful response to the crisis requires us to innovate and find new ideas. Let us work together for the betterment of all the citizens. Thank you very much. Wabillahi taufiqul hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, um, YB Nancy. That's a very, very inspiring um, and full of content, actually, the, the keynote. Uh, we are now moving on to the question and answer session. Um, the audience who's watching the keynote just now, um, if you have any questions, please uh, put it in the event chat or even the stage chat. We will pick it up for you and I will ask um, <coughs> uh, YB Nancy, Minister Nancy, the question. So any questions from the members of the audience? Hold on a little while. Let's see on the stage. Okay. What? Ah, okay. So we have a question from Akash Shamir. How do you see Malaysia in the travel bubble with other countries? 
um, how do you see Malaysia in the travel bubble with other countries? Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Camilia. Thank you, Akash, for asking the question. Well, right now, our priority is to keep Malaysia safe. We have discussed with the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and also Ministry of Health, the plans of the travel bubble with other countries. But for now, uh, Camilia and also Akash and all those who are out there to, to listen to this um, session, with the start of increasing numbers of cases, we also are, we are, we are, we are very cautious and we're worried that this would impose a higher risk to our country. So instead of um, looking into the countries itself, we are looking into destinations. We are looking at the overall, um, like just take for example, we have identified a few countries like um, Singapore, Brunei, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and recently we are we are opening up to Singapore, especially only for essential services. But um, looking into uh, the aspect of some countries, we which suddenly have their second wave, we are focusing into destination instead of the country as a, as a whole. For example, taking note of what happened in Australia. Uh, we see that Melbourne is going into the second wave. So what we are looking at now is destination, perhaps Perth, you know. But at the moment, even um, Australia is still not open to other countries yet. How, however, we need to look. We need to. Uh, we need to move forward. We need to be prepared. Although the countries are not open to other countries yet, or, or in, including Malaysia, but we have to prepare ourselves. To, um, to, to be ready, once they are open to us, then we are ready to, um, to arrange with them the travel bubble. So we can only implement it after meeting with the respective green zone countries and after the number of cases have already improved. And I believe they are also looking into the same aspect. I think uh, that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Minister, the Honourable Minister. We have one more question um, from Jose Luis Preza. Um, the question is, what are concretely the actions that have worked for Malaysia until now to keep things afloat, the economy in particularly the tourism and cultural sector? What are concretely the actions that have worked for Malaysia until now to keep things afloat the economy in particularly tourism and cultural sector. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Camilia. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for the question. Now, actually, um, before we came up with uh, our strategies, uh, we have been uh, having a lot of engagements with our industry players. So we have come up with, uh, we have agreed to come up with a few strategies. First of all, we have to restore confidence among our people, among the people, among the, the, the local tourists. We must uh, make sure that you know we 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 promote feel good factors and also success stories in overcoming COVID nineteen and uh, more tech. Of course, we we are proud that in Malaysia we have been able to do that. Though um, at the same time we are very cautious about what's going on in the various parts of the country, um, like um, the various states in the country. Uh, what are the numbers of cases which have been reported daily? So that's number one. One is restoring confidence. Number two is to boost domestic tourism, such as um, offering personalized and creative packages through online travel fairs. Uh, we are quite lucky because I see that I noticed that our, our airlines are also helping by providing um, very attractive uh, packages and promotes hidden gems in our countryside as tourists are expected to prefer safe destinations. Now, um, we in MOTEC, in the ministry, and I personally went down to the ground, we went to the various states to see the conditions in the states, how the hotels are being, being uh, sanitized, how they keep to ensure that they uh, adhere to the SOPs. So that's how we we um, we make sure that uh, the SOPs are uh, the 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 destinations or the places that we are promoting are really um, safe for for um, for us to for people to visit, and uh, we are also enhancing the quality of tourism products and services 
by ad adopting the new norms such as hygiene. Uh, we really went to check how they, they sanitize the hotel switches and all the little, little things that they, they, they do and make sure that they are really um, complying with all the SOPs. Again, this is where we want to make sure that all the public places, including shopping malls, uh, are also um, adhering to the SOPs. And uh, from time to time, we are also promoting uh, SOPs to be in, uh, to be approved by the the National uh, Security Council, which I mentioned in my uh, my keynote just now. And uh, we also have to ensure sustainability of culture and arts industry. So that's where the other parts of tourism products, that is uh, the arts and culture, are also being introduced. And we we make sure that the music. The, the um, all those traditional dancers are also being 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 uh, being um, showcased when it, wherever we went to, and we went to the museum. So this is how we want to ensure that uh, all the culture and arts industry in the the various places in the country are sustained by introducing all the um, by reopening the events in the country and also also leveraging on smart tourism now we are um, promoting usage of digital marketing uh, usage usage of online um, um, services uh, and also online um, uh, the, the usage of social media especially we are encouraging more and more people to to be involved apart from us um, ensuring that the promotion of the domestic tourism, actually, domestic tourism in the countries are really being tapped through the usage of smart tourism, um, using the digital marketing, um, online kind of uh, promotion. So these are among our strategies, um, Camilia and Jose. Thank you for asking. Thank you. So that, uh, uh, that that's, the, that's how um, we in Motec are um, doing uh, our our part to ensure that um, don't, uh, our tourism industry uh, will reboot and um, it is um, uh, it is something that is um, um, well we, we we help the especially the the industry players to carry on with their economic activities. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister Nancy. We still have a few time uh, um, minutes. Um, I have one question that I think will be very, very much important to um, the audience of the conference. Um, it's regarding education. Um, so the question is from uh, Nur Asila. Um, I don't want to be assuming, but it sounds like from Malaysia. So Nur Asila Muhammad, um, the question is, how does the MCO affect the market need in tourism education, especially for students and undergraduates? Actually, MCO is really well. It has really affected the the overall industry. And you know, tourism involves accommodation, airlines, and everything, every aspect that the people are looking forward to, and um, that helps the the country to grow. is all through tourism, and we contributed about fifteen point two percent to the GDP of the country. And we have lost between as our estimated loss is between uh, is about forty five B. We, from uh, January to June this year, so um, it is really affecting everyone. And then uh, for for education, you can see that a lot of them are not able to go to the uh, to schools, to universities. But anyway, I, I see that um, MCO has taught us a lot of things because it made us um, work of it put for a pass forward the usage of artificial intelligence, usage of the IoT, usage of industry revolution, uh, industrial 4.0, industrial revolution 4.0. Because um, before that, I think uh, people, those who are in, in who, who, who were interested in it would be using it. But here, almost everyone has to be um, skillful in it. That includes those 
um, who are staying at home because they have to order food. Some of them, they want to order food and some of them uh, took part in all these online activities. So it made people learn. But anyway, on our part, uh, especially for those who are in the industry, what we did, um, we introduced upskilling and reskilling of the uh, human capital. So um, of course, I, I must say that the students are also um, uh, benefiting in, in the sense that we allow them to take part in uh, or to participate in our programs through online. Um, if we want to look into direct um, losses or direct, direct um, benefits, it depends on how we look at things. Um, if we see that uh, MCO has stopped a lot of things from happening, but um, having said that, it also helps people to learn new skills. So maybe for educate uh, those who are in who are still studying, uh, students uh, look at this as an opportunity to learn new things, because uh, this is where um, Malaysia has to force itself to really. Um, intensify the usage of online uh, facilities. So I, I hope that I can answer um, Ida's question. Yeah, thank you. Definitely, Webinancy, thank you so much. Um, it's amazing that to see um, there's a lot of uh, sayings or even news and article about how countries who are successfully coping with uh, this pandemic are led by women. And it's very nice to see uh, a woman minister leading this uh, most challenging ministry um, and to overcome this. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you are here to share with us. Um, we are at the thank end you, of yeah. the session today. Um, and I would like to say thank you on behalf of the School Malaysia and also the Global Event Taking Alliance. I would like, um, I would like to thank, uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you all for inviting me. Never missing you all again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, YB Nancy. Um, we you. will move on now to the keynote. Bye, see you, uh, YB Nancy. Thank you, bye. bye.